I want to dive into their kits, see how cool they are. Some of them are pretty insane, so let's get right into it. What up guys, it's Murder Inc. here on the test server today talking about the new champions we can be looking forward to coming into the game. So we're going to start it off. Of course, I'm going to show you the animations, what they do, all of that good stuff. Briefly, I'm going to go over who they are first. We have Acrisia Dwarf Attack Based Legendary Next Trunda. Let's find out. So not, not a, listen, we're not making a claim that big for sure. So the next champion we do have is going to be Staltus Dragonbane. First of all, these new champions look sick, right? I mean, we've had some pretty, we've had a bad streak. Let's just call it what it is. We've had a bad streak. Banner Lord's defense based legendary Staltus Dragonbane. For a Banner Lord, I mean, think of the other Banner Lords in the game. This guy is popping off aesthetically. Next, we have Skrank. What a name, right? Skrank Ogre and Tribe attack based. Epic, is this the next seer? No, there, there is no next seer. And next we have Dark Elves Durandal attack. Epic champion here, still, I mean, they're not shying away from the epics. Awesome glow on the weapons here. And then finally we have a Knight's Revenant attack based epic, Franix here. Okay, so with that being said, let's head into campaign, go over their skills and then go over their animations because you guys already know, I love to see animations that completely pop off. So we're gonna head straight into our, whatever this is called, let's first snipe that void legendary that, I mean, it's gonna be hard for most people to pull it. I get it, it is new, all of that good stuff, but we can still showcase this champion here for sure. And we're gonna be one champion short, but it's fine. So as we can see from the auras, we have a crit rate aura here, we have a defense aura here, all good stuff, let's dive in. So we are at one time speed here. We have our first champion, Blitzer in Chaos Attacks. One enemy has a 40% chance of placing 25% weaken for two turns. This chance increases to 75% chance if the target's under an HP burn. What does that mean? There's an HP burn, probably right here. Attacks all enemies has a 75% chance. Book to 100, of course, that's how they do it. Fills his champion's turn meter by 15% on each critical hit. Good and bad, we all know why hitting too hard on the spider is bad, because you can kill the spiderlings, then you lose out on a lot of damage overall to the main spider, so it is what it is, it's probably going to be a 3 turn cooldown. Next we have Sup on Blood, does that just sound way too gangster or what? Attacks one enemy two times, heals this champion by 15% of the max HP on each critical hit, places attack up on this champion for two turns if they're under HP burn, let's see what the HP burn looks like. Okay, so he rains down blades, puts them on fire, not too shabby for sure. Axe of Glory attacks one enemy two times if the target is under any debuff. Each hit decreases the target's turn by 10%, pretty standard, kind of like a Visix. Attacks all enemies two times, each hit has a 50% chance of placing stun for one turn. The one turn's kind of iffy, but attacking twice with each hit having a 50% chance that's a pretty consistent stun champion because of course you can't resist here and this is booked to a 75% chance if you decide to use books on this guy a3 dragon heart five turn cooldown increase the effect on this champion for three turns then attacks all enemies i like how they're adding two parts to a lot of these champion skills i don't know if you guys have noticed it but it is giving legendaries and epics more value overall which can be a problem because the old champions are kind of getting left behind 75 percent chance going up to 100 of placing decreased crit damage if attack greater than defense vice versa decrease speed if attack equal to or lower than their defense so let's just go ahead and look at the a3 that is cool all right that is a cool ability now let's go back to the first champion scrank here what a name and we use his a2 i like it I'm not complaining let's take a look at what this done man that dragon ability was sick Okay, so he drops a dragon egg. Looks like it did pretty decent damage. Granted, they have no gear and we're in campaign. I get it. Okay, next champion, Unflagging Assault. Attacks one enemy, 45% chance of placing defense down. Okay, damage increases 
by 10% every time this skill is used up to 100%. So, and it's labeled as enemy max HP. So this is the legendary void champion here. Very interesting kit because all of the tags on the skill multipliers say damage based on enemy max HP and HP and attack. The same thing here and HP and attack and even the first one HP and attack. So usually when things are split like this, it's not that good but we'll have to find out and dive into depth here. Of course, as I'm going over these champions, if you wanna see a specific champion spotlight from any of the cool ones we're showing you today, let me know in the comments. I'll make a video dedicated for that. I mean, this Void Legendary, it's looking like I will make one for this, showcasing it in every single dungeon possible. Based on the kit, so let's continue going over that kit. Battlefield Domination, attacks all enemies twice, placing a shield buff, on this champion for two turns, the value of the shield is equal to 5% of this champion's max HP for each critical hit. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, pretty cool animation slash, no complaints there. So we've gone over the A2, the A3, now let's see the basic A1. Just a nice quaint stab. Let's see the A1 of the awesome, this is the coolest champion so far. Another just single hit here. Now let's go over this A3 shutdown attacks one enemy two times, having an 80% chance of stealing 100% of the target's turn meter before attacking. This effect cannot be resisted if the target has higher max HP than the champion, so no accuracy needed if he's fighting a boss. That That's basically what they're saying, and you can take the turn meter. So you're limited already by what you can do. Most bosses cannot have their turn meters altered, which is kind of unfortunate but it is what it is let's just go over the passive decrease the damage taken from aoe attacks by 50 percent 50 percent aoe damage reduction that's pretty good if the target's hp is double this champion's max hp this champion's attack will deal damage based on the target's max hp instead of this champion's attack so this guy essentially is going to be a boss killer i like it the only issue is can we even say it's an issue or kind of an issue? They've limited enemy max health abilities and all of the relevant endgame farming bosses. So can this guy stand the test of time? Uh, listen, I don't know. We're going to have to test it for sure. So let's see what this shutdown mechanic looks like. Okay, kind of an anticlimactic uh, slap. The next one we have Royal Assassin here attacks one enemy will ignore 50% of the target's defense placing a perfect veil on this champion if it is a critical hit. Let's see. Another kind of anticlimactic stab here. Let's go over the A1 animation. Decent. Nothing crazy. So it looks like the two flashy ones are the far left and the one second from the right here. And let's just go ahead and poke this guy. Some more poking going on. We got a crit. Okay, that's a death. And now let's look at this. Dispatch them attacks. All enemy will ignore 15% of each target's defense. Builds this champion's turn meter by 10% on each critical hit. So potentially very hard hitting AOE ability. Let's see if the animation looks cool. What was that? Okay, we gotta run that back. Let's go ahead and edit this. Um, I'm okay with Skrank. His kit's rather straightforward, so let's swap him out for another legendary that we haven't talked about yet, just so we can go over it. And we'll kind of run through the other, I mean, epic, I guess is what we were missing here. So these are the ones that I kind of want to focus on again, because Skrank is HP burner. We have tons of them already. He has void affinity, so that's cool. But this is what we want to talk about. Carve through A1. 40% chance of placing attack down for two turns. Tender Mercies attacks one enemy and inflicts 100% more damage against targets without any buffs. Could be pretty cool. There's a lot of dungeon bosses that don't have buffs. Enemy mobs, if you're going first, they will never have buffs unless it's a passive, which isn't very common. Next, we have Isolate attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 50% chance of stealing one random buff from the target. Nothing too impressive there. All single target abilities. Quick animations. Quick animations are cool. Okay, let's take a look at this dragon heart. We have one time speed. That's cool. There's no doubt about how cool that animation is. Next, we have isolate here, attacking one enemy three times. Let's see if there's anything to this. A nice dash. I don't know, misses the mark for me. Here's that double hit stun. 
This is where it drops an egg in the middle and then it has the stun animation here. This is the Void Legendary again. You know what, let's just use the A1 and the next round we'll use the AoEs to see if we can proc some more good things out of the animation. Okay, so let's go and poke this guy with the fast animation epic. Let's go ahead and use the A1 on the awesome animation. And then let's go ahead and use Battlefield Domination from the Void Legendary. Okay, so do like the effects on the ground. Overall, they did a great job. Stoutus, hands down the best animations out of this entire group here. Acrisia, lacking a little bit of imagination, kind of. Durandil, definitely had some cool animations for sure. Ranix, he is, I hate to say it, but kind of like a filler epic. In my opinion, at least, maybe you guys think he's good, but... With that being said, that's kind of cool to recently use champions and just in case it was confusing as I was doing it and not showing you the champion names, let's talk about the skills a little bit. So this guy is definitely interesting. Wait, it's a guy, right? We're not here assuming genders. This is a female. So Acrisia, the female dwarf. And could this be the Trunda equivalent of PVE content. This has to be tested thoroughly for sure here. There's a lot of potential. Like I said, if you want to see a video simply dedicated to one champion where I test them everywhere in the game, I can do that for you guys for sure here. This one I'm probably going to do anyways because it's so unique based on every single ability being enemy max HP. So while it is capped, this does yield a lot of potential and quite a few dungeons, so it's definitely worth talking about. As far as the books go, we have four, eight, 12. 12 is a lot of books, to be honest, so they would have to be really, really good to fully invest into all of this, but overall, the kit's looking rather strong for sure. Moving on to the next, Staltis Dragonbane with the coolest animations of the bunch here. I like this guy a lot. So we didn't get to talk about the passive that's unlocked by Ascending, which usually the champions come Ascended, they didn't this time. Whenever an enemy attempts to place Weakened, Defense Down, or Poison on this champion, reflects it back onto the attacker. Damage increases by 5% for each debuff on the target. So we have some damage scaling. We have a good survivability mechanic here that reflects Defense Down, Weakened, and or Poison. So a lot of cool things here. How much content really applies defense down weakened and poisons on you where it's a threat well of course you can think of the poison spider from the doom tower that's the one that kind of i don't know for me at least kind of jumps out into my head as far as defense down and weaken the new content that you may or may not have seen depending on when i release this video that has a defense down that can be pretty deadly to your team although if you use the team that i'm gonna show you guys for that new dungeon you, you won't have to worry about any of that but if you don't have a team like that this could definitely be a viable choice if you are able to pull this guy and this guy's booking is two six seven eight nine ten eleven books okay so plarium i thought we were doing well with the books 11 books is still a lot we gotta bring these champions down to eight books on the reg nine books on the reg 11 you're kind of pushing it so kind of as i was talking about before drake hunter tactics here interesting stun attacks two times each individual attack has that chance of placing the stun debuff and it goes up to 75 percent in a three turn cooldown so this is a rather consistent stun you wouldn't overlap this with the stun set that's definitely overkill here but most champions peak at 50 percent so the fact that this is 75 percent it's not 100 percent and it is two chances but this is definitely going to be a solid champion i mean if i pull this guy i'm using him all the time because of how cool this dragon heart ability is increased defense on me has a chance to apply decreased crit damage or decreased speed based on the stats of the target you're attacking but the attack animation amazing and of course we have the a1 that's similar to visix next we have durandil who was uh rather what's the word underwhelming yes you have a chance of freezing it's going to be 50 percent chance because you always crit cap your champions when they're damaged champions if you're not you're trolling i've seen an argument of someone saying 90 percent is fine it's not fine i don't know where you're getting that from but 100 percent only 
End of story. Attacks to all enemies will ignore 15% of each target's defense. Those his champions, so he could be a nuker for sure. This animation was decently cool. And then, so this guy's an ignore defense bot, right? If you're looking for a decent nuker, you don't have one yet for the arena. If you didn't pull Trunda, most people don't pull Trunda. You didn't pull Hefrak. You didn't pull any of the other common arena nukers. This guy can be a saving grace because not only can he nuke, even though he only has one of these, it's going to fill his turn meter on each crit and you're going to be critting like we just established here. And then he has a hard hitting, ignores 50% of the target's defense. How do I know it's hard hitting without knowing the multipliers? Because 50% of the target's defense is a massive amount with nothing, with no strings attached, right? There's no condition behind this. It is what it is. Royal Assassin, true to the name. This guy's going to be a pumper for sure. Then we have Skrank here. Listen, Skrank with his goggles looking, I mean, he's looking okay. Looking a little bit weird. Got the crossbow on his back. He has four, five weapons total, plus some throwing knives on his arms. So this guy's ready for battle for sure here. So we have the AOE HP burn. We have the passive I didn't get to talk about because it's not ascended once again. Increases this champion attack and crit damage every time HP burn triggers on an enemy, stacking up to 25%. So we've already gone over the pros and cons of increasing damage on an HP burn champion. Usually they're for Spider. You can use this in Hydra for sure, but Spider is going to be the main draw for most players at least until everyone starts mosey on down to the end game section where hydra becomes much more common and you don't want damage on hp burn champions you're pretty much hoping to stay at 15 percent crit rate stacking and no damage so the fact that they gave this guy stacking damage makes him better in places like hydra or other areas of the game where hp burn can make a difference for you and less viable for spider i'm not going to say he's not viable for spider at all it just definitely lowers the viability for sure since it's passively increasing damage now you can just not ascend him right the smart thing would be to just don't ascend this champion then you don't have to worry about the 25 percent scaling stacking damage that he would be getting assuming you can keep this guy alive and then finally we have phrenix and I don't know, this one not looking too good. We saw the single hit attack down. Why? Next we have attacks when enemy increases 100% damage against targets without any buffs. Very niche. Why? Attacks one enemy three times, places block buffs for two turns if the target has no buffs on them. Once again, it's single target, even despite being a triple hit and the chance of stealing a buff. J just why? I thought we've kind of moved past this uh, filler champion, but I was wrong. So these are the five new champions, some really solid options here. I know I've said it 10 times, but again, if you want to see anyone, even if someone like Frenex that I've said is kind of bad, if you do want to see a champion spotlight, I'll take the time, test it out in whatever areas they deem to be extremely viable in and we'll make a champion guide on it so that's going to conclude let me know which one your favorite is do you agree on how cool this guy's animations are what are your thoughts on this legendary dwarf could be very very interesting once further testing is done for sure give me your thoughts give me your feedback as always if you enjoy this content smash that like button subscribe turn the notification bell and i will see you all in the next upload